All right, welcome back. So we're working in section uh, one, uh, sorry, five point one, and this time we're going to go over some examples using the rules that we've introduced. So we haven't introduced all the rules yet, but we're going to go over some examples. Go over some examples using the the rules that we've introduced so far. Man, this pen always takes a little while for me to get used to it first. So remember we had the conjunction introduction, we had conjunction elimination, we also introduced the uh, conditional elimination, and then we also used conditional introduction. So let's go over an example, uh, and just maybe I'll use uh, the green here, right, to signify that we are indeed in the system. And uh, I'm not going to bother going back and forth between the colors because that takes a little bit too long. So uh, I'm just going to be using green here instead of red to signify that we're actually working in sentences of SL. So suppose we had the following assumptions, and we'll number these on the side. One of them is that uh, if Obama wins, then a Democrat wins the presidential election. And suppose that we also have another assumption that uh, Mitt Romney did not win. So it's not the case that Mitt Romney won. And Obama does win, or Obama did win. So we can imagine ourselves at some point in the future. And lastly, let us assume that if a Democrat wins, then it's not the case that a Republican won. And these are our sort of our premises, right? These are our starting assumptions. So we always put a line right here to signify that, okay, these are our starting assumptions. And what we want to derive Derive, I'd like to derive, let's say that a Republican did not win. This isn't me trying to, you know, push any kind of view of political line. This is just me picking an example here. So this is, uh, we want to derive that a Republican didn't win from these given assumptions. And we're going to use the rules that we've talked about before. So these elimination and introduction rules for conjunction and the conditional uh, introduction and elimination rules. So one of the first things you'll notice is we have a conjunction and with a conjunction you know that you can eliminate either of them. And the idea is you want to look for the sentences that are that you think are going to help. So intuitively here we see that not R, what we want to derive, is actually the consequent of this material conditional right here. And if you remember the elimination rule for the material conditional, you need to have the material conditional itself, and you need to have the antecedent. You need D. And so we might take a scan and see where else we have D in our assumptions. And we notice that D is the consequent of this material conditional over here. And so we want to, we want to get this D out so that we can discharge this material conditional, right? So we can use material conditional elimination. But to do that, we first have to find, oh, we need to get this sentence here. And if you'll notice in our conjunction, we have O. And we know we can get O out of this conjunction by conjunction elimination. So I've kind of taken you through this sort of backwards way of uh, thinking about it. And this is often going to be a strategy that you can use when you do derivations, is to do this sort of backwards backtracking to see where it is that you want to start out. So we're going to try to first get this, uh, this O out. And the way we can do that is by using conjunction elimination. So I can just write here O, and this is line 4. And I need to write the justification for this. So the way I did this, where I got this was by conjunction elimination. And I'm also going to write the line number from where I got that. And I got that from line 2. So conjunction elimination, you only have to cite one line. 
Okay, so I got that from line two. Okay, now that I have the O, and now that I have the uh, material conditional, if O then D, that's enough for me to be able to get D. So if you remember the rule for the conditional elimination, you need to have two components. You need to have the antecedent at one point, and you need to have another line with the actual material conditional, and then you can take out D. So let me write that here. I can get D by conditional elimination, and I need to cite the moves here. So I got it from line one and from line four. And hopefully you'll remember the way the material conditional worked. And I apologize, this P right here should actually be the meta variable. So maybe I'll actually keep using uh, the two lines to indicate the bold face. So if you recall, conditional elimination worked like so. So if I have if I have the material conditional and then I have the antecedent, then I can prove the then I can take out the consequent. And that's all we've done here, right? We have the material conditional and then we have the antecedent. So I use conditional elimination to get that out. And now that I have D, remember my goal is to derive not R. And I can do that here because I have the material conditional if D then not R, and I also have the antecedent. So let me just draw this line down a little bit. So at line six, I can write not R. And my justification for that is again conditional elimination. from lines three and from line five. Okay, so this is now, and this is my goal now, so now I'm done, right? Um, the last line in the derivation is the goal that you wanted. So if I want to derive not R, what I need to do is uh, use the rules that we've introduced until the very last line is not R, and then I'm finished. Okay, so uh, we'll leave that as, as sort of a standalone example that we can go to uh, so that we can always come back to this video uh, should you need to see a quick example.